Hello everyone, it's Jackie, back for another GameStop video. And today we have lots to discuss because GameStop's earnings are on Tuesday at the close. There's a lot of questions and a lot of things that we should talk about prior to those earnings, so I thought I would uh, make a little short, concise video uh, going through what the expectations are and uh, going through kind of a little bit of the chart, a little bit of the fundamentals, and then kind of what we can uh, anticipate going forward. So I thought we would just kind of start with the fundamentals because those are something that uh, we've obviously got to pay attention to given that you know, this is a company that relies upon fundamentals. And so we, we need to see the company continuing to show improvement. So looking at Q4 of 2022, Okay, we can see that the sales were $2.226 billion. Okay, SG&A was $453 million. Basically, um, this is GameStop basically cutting costs. Okay, and this was a significant, significant decrease from uh, 2021. In 2021, this number was $539 million. So uh, you want to continue to see SG&A uh, climb down, right? And then we had an income, right? In Q4, GameStop made money. They actually made $48.2 million. Then GameStop's inventory on hand was $683 million. Again, a number, another number that we want to continue to see uh, climbing down. Uh, basically, the reason that we want to see this continue to climb down is GameStop can have uh, less of the inventory on hand because essentially they're selling it as fast as they get it. And by being able to do so, they have to carry less of the product on hand, which means taking up less space, which means that GameStop can cut costs even further by leasing uh, less space because they don't need it. So that's another number that we want to continue to see climb down. And then the last one was the cash on hand at the end of Q4 was $1.391 billion. All right, that was last year's Q4. And then the entire year for GameStop, Okay, sales for GameStop were just shy of 6 billion. They were 5.9 with an EBITDA of 60.4 million, the first positive EBITDA for GameStop in I think it was 5 or 6 years, uh, with an adjusted EBITDA of 82.5 million. All right, and then GameStop had a net loss last year of 131 million dollars or the equivalent of $1.03 per share. So, obviously, with Q4, we're looking at Q4 Looking at the full year for GameStop, currently what's being priced in is that GameStop is going to have a full year of profitability, a full year, so no longer a net loss. That's what's currently being priced in. So for GameStop's expectations, um, basically, you know, kind of what, what I'm thinking, all right, and these are what I have written down here for what we want to see for this year's Q, uh, Q4, okay? was we want to see full year sales over $6 billion. That would be amazing, okay, because that would also eclipse 2021, the uh, COVID recovery year, and that would show a lot of strength in GameStop's sector and also GameStop's business, the video game industry. You know, that would be a very, very positive thing for GameStop, okay? And then like I was discussing before, continued cost cutting and closure of poor performing stores. Ryan has done an excellent job at making sure that those stores that perform poorly are being closed, while those areas that uh, Ryan and GameStop think that they can uh, attack because these areas, uh, I'll say, for example, uh, an area, you know, pick California, for example, an area where there, it's just a video game hub, right? So GameStop is targeting these areas where they know that there's a lot of video gamers and a lot of people that are willing to spend money. And by closing these poor performing stores and opening stores in these areas where Ryan and GameStop think that they could have a lot of success, that could mean a lot of positive things going forward for GameStop. And it's it's already, you know, you've already kind of seen the fruits of those labors so far with just last year's numbers, especially the full year. GameStop made a significant improvement. I think they improved the net loss by $250 million. And that was just last year. This year has already looked better. Part of the reason that uh, this year has looked better is because there have been a ton of video game releases. And specifically for Q4, people should be really excited because there was a lot of video game releases in Q4 last year. 
So uh, I've just written some down here. So there was Assassin's Creed, UFC 5, the new NHL game. There was the Hogwarts game, Batman, Spider-Man, which was insane. That was one of the biggest releases of this year. Then you also had Forza 5, and then you had the Super Mario Bros. game for Nintendo DS. So you had a ton of uh, epic games that were uh, released in Q4. And then, you know, forget about Q4, also thinking about the entire year. This was an amazing year for video game releases, right? We can also just think about Legend of Zelda and how incredibly popular that game was this year. Right, That's just one of the ones that I can think of off the top of my head that was just, I mean, you saw that thing everywhere and you saw lineups of people everywhere for that game. And then as much as people hate it, Call of Duty, right? The new Call of Duty with the new Warzone and stuff. I mean, people are crazy for that stuff. So, you know, there's, there's just, there's a lot of positive developments taking place this year with GameStop and with Ryan at the helm. A CEO who's taking zero dollars for compensation and is working desperately hard to get GameStop profitable. And not just to make GameStop profitable, but to make it a good business again. A place that people actively want to, sh want to shop at, right? So continuing down our little list here, we obviously want to see the inventory continue to decline. We talked about that earlier. GameStop's cash on hand continuing to rise. That would be a huge one. Right, I would love to see GameStop have even more cash on hand because of a profitable year and a profitable Q4. But then the other question rises, or did Ryan invest the money into anything? Right, Because Ryan just recently got uh, approval from the board that he can take GameStop's cash in hand and invest it in any manner that he sees fit, including buying stocks. So we have to ask, did Ryan invest this money? That's a legitimate question. So that's going to be something that, uh, you know, we're going to find out, hopefully, uh, come this earnings call on Tuesday. And then sales in Q4 2023 to eclipse $2.226 billion from the high of 2022. We also talked about that. So having sales above that $2.2 billion number would just be insane, right? And then the last one, and this is arguably the biggest one for our fundamental analysis, is forward guidance. Right, We haven't had Ryan or anybody from GameStop give forward guidance in three plus years. Since Ryan took the helm, we have not had forward guidance. And the market most recently, now I've wrote, wrote that in there for you guys at the bottom. The market has really not liked companies having weak forward guidance. Uh, I would tell you uh, Lulu, uh, Lululemon, for example, is a great one where they had a fantastic Q4 earnings. But they had weaker forward guidance. And then that caused that particular stock to go down 20%, I believe it was. Right, so GameStop, we haven't had forward guidance in three years. So we also have to consider the fact that even if, uh, even if GameStop has a really positive Q4 earnings, right, even if GameStop has a positive Q4 earnings, it doesn't necessarily mean that the, the price is just going to skyrocket, right? And I'm a huge GameStop bull. I want the price to skyrocket just as much as the next person. I just want people to be aware of the potential that it might not do that if Ryan doesn't come out and give forward guidance for GameStop. It doesn't even have to be Ryan. Just somebody give us some kind of forward guidance about what to expect, right? So that's one of the things that's going to be a big question mark going into the earnings, okay? So now we've gotten all of the fundamental analysis out of the way. Let's spend uh, a couple of minutes going through the chart and what we think about GameStop's chart. So uh, GameStop's chart, there's a couple of different things that we've been monitoring and looking at uh, through the weeks and through the months because this is something that uh, we have been planning a trade on this thing for quite some time. So I want to make sure that we have everything all set up on here. Okay, good, good, good. And then let's just get that little fib time zone thing on there because that's hidden somewhere in here. There we go. There it is. Okay. So GameStop, right? Really, really important to always look left and identify prior areas of support and resistance, right? After they shut the buy button off on all of us and cheated us out of a whole bunch of money, GameStop made a massive push to the downside, a pretty nasty one, right? 
And you can see I've drawn a white line here and I'll draw another one here because this is going to be a monster, monster important spot should GameStop go down on its earnings. If GameStop were to push down on its earnings, there are two wildly important areas, okay, that date all the way back here, February of 2021. A massive zone of support, a massive zone of potential liquidity, just a huge area of support and resistance here between $11.70 and $10. Now, having noticed that, okay, there's a couple of other important things that we can look to on GameStop's chart. You can see this blue box that I've drawn here. This is a very clear area of support. We can see that it was supportive back down here before GameStop made a huge move that we caught back when, right? Because of all those touches of divergence that we caught. And now you can see GameStop is making its way down there. It's below the daily 50, below the daily 200, pushing back down after a really bear bearish, nasty candle. And then you can see Jackie has a little harmonic structure here. So interestingly enough about this harmonic structure, it comes between a golden pocket between a FIB time zone, a key area of support, and a harmonic completion that comes at the golden pocket of a macro FIB fork. Okay, and you can see that that golden pocket of this pitchfork has been wildly important. Every single time GameStop has made a double bottom off of that golden zone and made monster explosions to the upside. This one was to the tune of 140%. This one was to the tune of 130%. And then you had this one right here. Another double bottom that led to a percentage move of over 70. Right? And now GameStop appears to be doing the very same thing where it's going to make that double bottom right near, or even if it goes a little bit below, right, that golden pocket, and then it's going to make a massive explosion. That is the hope. That's the idea, right? Is that you go gold to the gold, right? And then I've got some indicator targets that this is my own little indicator that I've set up. And these are the targets that we're, we're aiming for on there. Okay, 95% success rate with this indicator. So looking at those targets, those are the ones that we're aiming for should GameStop find itself on a gap down after earnings. Okay, and then let's turn this off. So if GameStop were to gap down for earnings, that's what I would be looking for. And then if we turned off of this, we turned off this pitchfork, and then we actually open up GameStop's macro channel here. You guys can see that GameStop has been in a descending channel all the way since the events of January, right? And every single time that this thing has found the bottom trend line, it's made huge explosions. The same way it finds that golden one, right? Now, let's just say, Lord forbid, there's a nasty gap down on GameStop, and it gets to that white line, right? Well, that white line just so happens to intersect with the bottom side of this large channel, right? And what happens if GameStop hits that and then goes from that bottom of the channel to the top side of the channel, right where an indicator target just so happens to lie? Well, look at the percentage gain that you're talking about here, right? Over or near 100% gain. And so that's a scenario that I want people to be aware of if it were to gap down, right? Or, you know, even push and make this double bottom. Just be prepared for a scenario where it doesn't just go to 1180, but potentially it pushes further towards that high nine or $10 flat spot mark, right? Because it makes sense and it lines with a whole bunch of technical artifacts, right? And not only that, one of the most important things that I wanted to bring up was the monthly. So on the monthly time frame, you have the monthly 200 period moving average here in yellow, okay? And with that, ever since it uh, first was created, okay, because it finally had enough data, in September of 2018, that 200 period moving average on the monthly has never been tested. It has never been tested. And so if GameStop were to find itself gapping down after earnings around the 1130 spot, I mean, you'd be testing that monthly 200 period moving average for the very, very, very first time ever. And normally the very first test from above becomes supportive. And if that were supportive, and then we started pushing off of that, you start asking yourself, oh my gosh, are we going to start breaking the top side of this channel? And then you start asking yourselves, oh my gosh, is this a potential bull flag? And then you measure this and you ask yourself, oh my gosh, are we about to destroy Ken Griffin and all of the shitty short sellers? It's possible. 
it's possible. So that is our fundamental and our technical analysis on GameStop headed into earnings. So the other side, we should obviously talk about that as well. The other side is GameStop earnings propel the price into just the stratosphere. At that stage, right, you're going to immediately start discussing the daily 200 period moving average at $17. And then you're going to be starting to talk about the top side of this channel, which comes in at around $21. And if you break through all that, I mean, then you got to pull out the weekly and you got to start looking at all of the weekly uh, moving averages. So then, I mean, arguably your next test comes at the weekly 200 at $25, right? So should GameStop gap up, it has a load of room above it. But be forewarned that there are very hard technical areas of resistance above at not just the weekly 200, not just the, the weekly slash monthly descending channel, but then you've also got the daily 200 and then you've got also got like tons of Fibonacci zones to pay attention to, right? If we pull a Fibonacci uh, from the highs of the Ryan Cohen buys from last summer and we just pull that Fib down, you're, you're like, you've got a golden pocket there at 20, the top side of that channel, the weekly, like there's just so many areas of technical resistance that I would just, you know, don't be afraid to, obviously, we you know, you never sell GameStop shares unless you're just a, you're a psychopath, but we just, you never sell GameStop shares ever. But if I was in some short dated options and the thing ripped up to 20 bucks, I'd probably be super jacked on whatever that profit was, you know, not financial advice. And nothing I said here today was financial advice, just pretty lines and pretty drawings on pretty charts with some little bit of analysis. But, uh, you know, if GameStop's earnings are fantastic and the thing just goes through the roof, like I would start looking heavily at 20, 22, and then 25. Anything beyond that, and then you can start talking about a short squeeze. But uh, for now, you know, GameStop's IV, the last thing I wanted to discuss was GameStop's IV currently ranks in the 99th percentile, meaning that essentially GameStop's uh, options right now are as expensive as they have ever been. And this just seems and feels to me like this is the perfect opportunity to scam everybody to the absolute max degree because options are the most expensive they've ever been. Everybody overpays and then the earnings happens and then the price barely moves and then everybody gets theta, uh, theta crushed and IV crushed and then we lose all of our money. And so I've just taken a reasonable share position. Again, not financial advice. I've taken a reasonable share position prior to earnings. If it gaps down, I will be looking heavily, looking to add heavily within this zone here between $11.70 and $10.00. And, and at that stage, I'm just going to have to trust the chart and trust the analysis and trust that this thing is going to make an absolutely explosive move off of those lows. I am predicting that GameStop is going to make an explosive move. Uh, but, you know, you sound dumb trying to say that before earnings. So I'm not going to say that on earnings. I just, you know, there's something that we've been monitoring on GameStop for a very, very long time. And uh, I don't want to give too much of it away, but we've been monitoring this on GameStop for quite some time. And it seems that this just keeps on happening. And I'm not sure why it keeps on happening, but it does. And so if it does keep on happening, you know, the expectation is, is that GameStop is going to make this absolutely massive explosion. But after this massive explosion, if it does happen, it looks to me like this thing retraces every massive what I've coined the fuck you. It's retraced every single one either straight all the way back down or it's gone at least 75% of the way back. And so the expectation would be that if this thing hit $22 and that's where it found resistance, I would anticipate that it makes a pretty steep move right back down. And it's not because I'm bearish on the stock, it's just because... We're not the ones currently in control. And until Ryan and company are done implementing their plan, uh, we, we just, we're not the ones that control this stock. We just trade it. But we're taking control back because people are learning how to do this. And rather than trade emotionally like a bunch of weirdos, we're learning how to do this without an emotional response. And it's always GameStop. It's Gamecock. We're going to the moon. We're always going to the moon. But for now, we trade the charts in front of us. And when the time is right, this thing is going to go to space and beyond. And you can all actually afford to buy spacesuits by the time this thing is said and done. All right. 
So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, appreciate some level-headed and common sense technical analysis and fundamental analysis on GameStop. And uh, yeah, we've got lots to look forward to this week. So uh, guys, GME to the moon. And uh, just as our final little send-off today, specifically for GameStop, there once was a stock that went to see the name of the stock was GME. Hold my bully boys, hold. Soon may the tendy man come and send our rocket into the sun. One day when the trading is done, we'll take our gains and go.